Well, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Jonathan Reeves and I'm going to talk you through a tutorial to show you how easy it is to import a SketchUp file into Vectorworks, uh, do a bit of simple rendering using Renderworks and basically make the model look really, really great. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go up to File, Import. You'll notice that Vectorworks has a huge range of import uh, settings, you know, lots of 2D formats, lots of image formats, but also a huge range of 3D formats as well. So it's a very easy bit of software to import from other uh, collaborative software into. One of the nice new features is Import SketchUp. Okay, it's been around for a while. So click Import SketchUp. I'm going to go off to a file that I've downloaded from the web already. You might recognize the name of this, Falling Water well-known architect Frank Lloyd Wright. So I'm going to click it, go ahead and click open. And a dialog pops up with the SketchUp import settings. Now to begin with, I'm just going to leave the simple method alone and just go for meshes and 3D polygons. You'll notice that if we click on options, that we can actually tell Vectorworks to create Renderworks textures for all materials. So essentially the Vectorworks materials will be created from SketchUp materials which have been applied. Let's go ahead and click OK to start the import process. OK, so it's going to take a few moments. You can see the model is now imported. And if I decide to fit to the model, you'll see what looks like a wireframe roof plan. So let's have a look at this model in isometric view. So we'll select the drop down menu, choose right isometric. Vectorworks takes a second or two, but immediately will pre render the model. So now when I switch to top plan and change to a different view for example the rendering is pretty much instant. So here we can see a very recognisable piece of architecture one of my favourite buildings in the world uh, Falling Water by Frank Lloyd Wright. So imported from SketchUp directly into Vectorworks and you can see it's incredibly fast uh, very speedy as a model. Okay let's take this a little bit further um, let's tune up the rendering ever so slightly. So I'm going to go into my OpenGL settings and you'll notice that we have the option to turn off the edges if you like the kind of more rendered look. Personally I think it looks rather nice with the edges being shown and I'm going to use shadows and turn those on to maybe high quality. At the moment there are no shadows because there is no light source in the model. By the way also I'll just mention this if I did want to increase the thickness of the edges, quite nice, you can get quite a nice sort of sketchy effect. You can see it's almost like a marker pen. Okay, let's take that back again. So we'll go back to the default, which is one. Okay, so my next um, action is to add a light source. To do this, I'm going to click on the light bulb on the visualization palette. If you like, you can undock these palettes. Let's click on the Heliodon tool. And this is a very effective tool for creating real world lighting. You can just place it in 3D. I might just place it into the top view just so you can see what immediately happens. So let's click. You can see that now I can angle the Heliodon to face the true north. Uh, I'm not quite sure where it is, so I'm going to assume that that is true north. And I know roughly that building is located in the USA somewhere. I can find it exactly and I could enter the exact location if required. Let's just click OK. Vectorworks will take a second or two to render now. You'll see that it's rendering the thumbnails down here. This is to do with the symbols that have come in from SketchUp. So the very first time you apply the Heliodon, expect the rendering just to take a little bit longer than normal. Okay, it's just whizzing through. As soon as it's rendered, we have shadows. Um, very nice, you can now click onto the Heliodon options. You can choose the date and different days of the year and obviously refine the time. And if you prefer, you can click the solar animation button and then you can literally scroll through the shadows of any particular day of the year and any time of the day. It's a very nice little aspect to the program. 
So if you're doing overshadowing studies, uh, this would be an excellent way to justify to your client why you've located the building in a certain way, whether you've applied solar shading to the facade. Um, it also makes for a very compelling presentation, particularly if we click export movie, then essentially we can set an animation running from sunrise to sunset. Maybe I'll come back to that later. Let's just click OK, go ahead. OK, so I'm going to choose 15 frames a second. I'll go for high quality. I'll click OK and I'm going to save this movie. Let's save it to the desktop. And you can see the Vectorworks whizzes through this at quite a rate of knots. Um, because the new Vectorworks 2016 is using uh, the VGM, the Vectorworks graphics module, that relies heavily on the graphics card. And the graphics card on most computers these days is, is very, very quick. So rather than the processor, the graphics card does a lot of the processing, hence the speed of the rendering. And you can see we're almost finished. OK, that's excellent. Brilliant, that's finishing up. So let's go ahead and quickly look into our finder. And we'll just go to the desktop. And let's double click on our movie. So here we are in QuickTime. I can play the movie. Beautiful. A very nice little movie. You can scrub through. So again, you can use it with the client to sort of show exactly the date and the time of the year um, to discover exactly what the shadows are doing and see where the sunlight is coming into the building. OK. Let's go back to Vectorworks. I'd like to do a little bit more. Um, I'd like to just put it back into 3D view and let's go for some slightly realistic views. So if we go into the new lighting options in the view menu, Vectorworks has now added a very nice feature. Um, not only, only can we slide the brightness up or down a, a tad to kind of tune it as we would require, in 2016 ambient occlusion has been added. And the beauty of this is you can adjust the strength and also the distance or the size rather. Let's go for maybe 1500. And you'll see immediately, if I turn that on or off, it makes quite a big difference to the realism of the rendering. So ambient occlusion is when the light is occluded or, should we say, lessened when it bounces into a corner. So it creates a much more realistic uh, sense of lighting. The real beauty is it's completely real time. It's something that can be turned on and off. And I think it's nice. It gives a nice sort of almost slightly dirty, more realistic, grainy look to the image, if anything. OK. Now, we're nearly there. I'm fairly happy with the, the way the model's turned out. I'm going to basically create some viewports now to create a series of, of elevations and an isometric view. A very nice quick way to do this in Vectorworks is use the view, create multiple viewports command. And essentially what this does, it takes your model and it generates front, top, right, left, bottom if required, let's do back and isometric views at a certain scale. I'm going to go ahead, click OK, and you literally see within seconds Vectorworks creates those drawings for me. So if I click update, probably what I'll get is a hidden line as my default render style, which is fine. I'd like to kind of just do a bit of tuning on this particular one, the isometric view. So let's scroll down in the options. For the background rendering, I'm going to choose OpenGL once again. Just check my background render settings. They should be as I left them back in the design layer. And I think I'll just click OK Update and see how that looks. So it's pretty fast. I'm very happy with that. So now what I can do is double click on my eyedropper tool. And essentially, if I tell Vectorworks I would like to pick up the render properties of that particular viewport, I can hover over, highlight the viewport, and click to pick up those render properties. Then, using my modifier key, I'll hold down the Alt key, click on these other viewports. You can see they all get the red out-of-date border flashing. So let's just select everything and click Update once again. So now Vectorworks will run through each of those viewports in very, very quick time and create a very nice elevation of each one and a plan. 
To really get this to work well, um, it's a good idea to perhaps set up different lights for different elevations so that you can cast the shadows in different directions. However, as a very quick way, within a few minutes to import a SketchUp file, do a few basic render settings and make it look really presentable in Vectorworks, I hope you'll agree that's a very nice workflow. Okay, well thank you for listening to our first Renderworks video and we hope to see you again shortly.